Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Mar Files. Thanks for tuning back in. Um, so today, I want to uh, go into envelopes with the multiple arbitrary function generator. We've talked about, we did an episode on um, making really cool LFOs. And the last episode, we talked a lot about timing um, with the kind of levels of time with the MARF and kind of mashing those two together. Um, you can get really cool envelopes with this thing. Um, you know, you've got the quad function generator, I think, in probably everybody's system that uses this stuff, um, which is generally going to be your a main envelope source, um, which is a pretty good one. You're, you're limited with your attack and decay, um, uh, just kind of a two-stage envelope. But by using quadrature mode and using the OR outputs, you can get some... Um, pretty funky envelopes going. Uh, you can get an AS, um, uh, uh, ADSR out of combining two channels and using the OR output put and kind of um, uh, and triggering them both at the same time, which is pretty cool. Uh, but what's cool about the MARF is you kind of have this operating mode section that has sustain and stop steps and all the slopes that you can you know, really draw um, out any kind of envelope with, you know, up to 16 stages or 32 if you have the uh, extender. Um, uh, yeah, you can kind of draw whatever type of envelope you can dream up. And um, what's also really cool is like when I think about kind of envelopes in uh, maybe like West Coast synth synthesis, um, in your classic um, ADSR, um, you kind of are, you're jumping back and forth with uh, which knob is kind of controlling the time of uh, the shape of the envelope and what's controlling the amplitude, um, where a lot of that's just based off of the levels of the sustain is gonna be kind of where your amplitude is and then the rest of the knobs, um, uh, you know, shape, kind of how quickly or how slow it, you know, fades in and out of that, um, of that, uh, of that shape on that sustain. Um, and so what's cool about the MARF is you can, uh, you kind of have separate controls for your time and separate controls for your main voltage output, which we're going to use as our, uh, amplitude. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to get into this with the uh, by using the uh, 223E, the tactile import uh, input port module, and its um, touch controller down here. And I kind of have it pre-set up to control the sawtooth oscillator on the 285. Um, it's going to control its pitch. And I have a couple keys to kind of set up to jump some octaves around. Um, I have part of the XY control to control the uh, wave shape to go from sine to saw. Uh, and then that's going into the 292 and then into our uh, 227E uh, mixer. So uh, first off, I'm going to uh, clang around some cables and we're going to use the the left side of the MARF, the kind of AFG1, as our what we're going to kind of be focusing on. Um, so I'm going to go straight from its output, um, main voltage output, into the correct uh, channel of the 292. Um, and then I'm going to patch its pulse output from one of the radios on the uh, 223E uh, into the start input on um, the function generator 1. Uh, so I guess we can just kind of start off by like showing off like basic building block uh, envelopes. Um, you're going to kind of first, you know, have we're going to start with stage one and that's going to be our first stage. And we'll just make a two stage envelope, kind of like what we would do with the uh, quad function generator. So I'll go to stage two, put a last stop or last uh, input on there. Actually, I'm going to slope that. I'm going to go back and slope both of them at this point. Um, and I'm going to put a stop step. So what we have set up right now, 
um, if we were just going to, I guess, run it. Um, so I just uh, patched that in there, um, and I hit the key. So we're um, we we're back to kind of LFO mode after I turn up one of the voltage inputs. So we're kind of back to triangle, and we've got our time multiplier that can slow down, speed that up, and we have our time sliders that can also augment the timing. But it's an envelope. We're kind of just we're wanting we're not wanting a looping envelope right now. We want a just you know single triggered um, envelope. So we're gonna put stop um, program stop on the second. Uh, stage. So now when we hit our key, oh, I got to give it some uh, voltage. So yeah, we've got a very simple kind of attack decay envelope right now. Um, we could take off the sloped um, or actually, yeah, we can take off the slope for the second step. And kind of get a, a sawtooth kind of ramp up into that um, with that envelope shape. Or we could get that sloped back there and take the slope away from the first stage. And now we've got like a ramp down decay envelope. And we can, uh, we've got the time range set for the uh, 0.2 to three seconds um, time range. Um, but we can mess with this and we can make, if we want like a really snappy envelope, we can shorten the time range of the first stage. So we'll go down to the 0.02. So much shorter, we can go down all the way. And we can also kind of follow up with its decay as well. So now I have a very short um, first stage and we're kind of at the point zero 0.02 on the second stage. I'll change the uh, low pass uh, gate section into combo mode so we get a little bit of ring, kind of a bongo y sound. So, very simple. So, now let's expand on this. Uh, we just have, you know, there's, it's just a simple attack decay. We've got no sustain in there. So, what we could do is bring back our. Um, We'll, yeah, bring back our slope on our first stage, and we're going to um, add also a sustain uh, modifier in the operating mode. Now, what this lets us do is when we hold down a key uh, on our input port module, um, and the pulse output from the radio, it's going to give it a pulse, but it's going to hold 5 voltage as long as I... Um, I hold this key and so um, so where this says if start pulse is high which means five volts <laughs> held in here it's going to um, either keep sustained or enable depending on which one you have selected um, so now we have a sustained envelope and you can see the um, under the mode section where the start input is um, where we currently have it on its you know stop step we can see it quickly go green and then into yellow as it's being held um, now let's um, so we've got got the sustain let's actually bring the um, envelope to um, let's mess with kind of individually its time a bit so let's make this a very well not very slow but we're gonna give it more of a 
a gentler kind of um, attack. Or more sus- um, yeah, take longer to rise, and we'll we'll give it more of decay as well. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like what we would get if we were, um, using the 281 function generator. Um, if we kind of turned up its attack and decay a bit and we had it in its sustain mode, um, which is the switch down and you kind of get that trapezoid shape where it's, you know, going to rise up, hold, let go and decay into its stop. Um, so What's kind of nice about this, we can now move, uh, we can start adding more steps. So we can kind of move past this, you know, simple function like we would get from a um, 281 envelope into uh, an ADSR. So I'm going to kind of take away what I've programmed here on the second stage, take away the stop and, and last, and I'll move that over to the uh, third stage. And now I will also remove the sustain because we don't want the sustain on the first note. We want that just to be our attack stage. And we're going to move the sustain oops, over to the second stage. Um, so now we can, we're going to, you know, with our voltage on our upper slider for our attack, um, you know, for this example, we're going to have it all the way up. And we're going to kind of give ourselves some time here, right, um, to, you know, reach that peak. And then with the decay, um, there's not a voltage for that because we're actually, you know, or are um, – sorry, let me put that there. Um, yeah, so for our voltage here, you know, this is where we're going to set – like this is where we're going to, you know, sustain our note. So we can make it not as high like we did so we don't have that kind of trapezoid shape. We're going to get our attack, and then we're going to get a decay point where it's going to you know, gradually go down to this sustained level. And where we make our kind of decay of the ADSR is with the time slider that's under our sustained note. So I'll kind of turn that up a little bit, and then we've got our decay here. And that's going to be turned all the way down, so after we sustain, it'll then gradually fade away. So... Let's try this out. Okay, so pretty pretty quick decay there, so I might want to turn that up a little bit. And I might want to back off on the voltage here a little bit more, give it actually our decay a little bit longer, maybe uh, extra ramp in to our attack. Yeah, kind of, oh, you know what? I don't have, I forgot to put our sloped step here. So that's why it was such a quick uh, decay because it's just going <laughs> going down to zero voltage immediately. Um, I'm going to up our decay a little bit more. I'm going to bring our amplitude of our sustain down a little bit. So now we're sustaining. So you kind of hear that nice curve down to our sustain note. And then a long decay right there. So there's your ADSR. Um, and it's, you know, very malleable with these voltages. So we're still kind of, you know, with our time range, we can make like a really long uh, attack. So let's, you know, put this into the two second to 30 second mode. Let me bring it down a little bit. Um, so now let's hear what this sounds like. So now I have um, just this stage is going to have this kind of 2 to 30 second uh, section. So we heard that take quite a bit, a bit of time to get to that attack or get through that attack stage into our sustain. Um, 
you know, if we really wanted to, we could crank that all the way up. We haven't even kind of touched on the time multiplier, um, which could multiply all of these, um, uh, all the, you know, all the time sliders and range with this. I'm just kind of sticking it at one, but you know, this is CV controllable too. Um, if you want to kind of do have like a macro control over the time of the envelope. Um, but yeah, we could crank this up and basically get, you know, with also the multiplier, um, get to like a, a two minute <laughs> rise, which would be pretty cool, but we won't bore you here as much as we are already. Um, so yeah, pretty cool, right? We've kind of got the ADSR thing going. It's just taking up three stages of the MARF. So, you know, you can use your other stage, your other section to, you know, do some sequencing or whatever else. Um, but what's cool, you know, we could keep on extending this thing or we could make, um, you know, little variations of different envelopes um, and kind of stack them throughout the sections, um, which could be, you know, addressed then um, through the strobe and external input. So you kind of have these envelope presets. So we've got like our, you know, our ADSR thing going here. And then we could go to um, just stages four and five. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> I did exactly what I wasn't going to do with like the very long <laughs> uh um attack time on that thing but uh but yeah you kind of heard how long that was going to take um so now uh i could make just a quick um we kind of move this over here and address it there so now i've got that really quick envelope and then we can address go back and address this here um, I guess I could for I kind of have this patched up but not I don't know how specific I have it actually set up but let's try it um, So now what I've done is I have another radio uh, on our 223E. I've got a pulse going out into the um, strobe input, uh, pulse input, and then it's CV voltage uh, into the external input. So I believe now, um, yeah, I do have this set up this way. So I have these two keys up here, this A and B, um, that is uh, addressing the stage address to go to the um, the last stage of each of these envelopes, um, which keeps it silent. So then I can, you know, get our ADSR envelope that'll go through its stages, and then I can switch it over to this really quick envelope. Um, I can keep going here, um, kind of going. Uh, through this and, and making envelopes, I don't do it that often. Um, I should, I should more, and it's been really fun doing this. Actually, um, I did a, I had a much bigger patch going um, where I kind of used similar envelopes that I was addressing through the 223E and kind of playing along with the eight stage sequence. Um, I'll put a link to that. I've got it up on my other YouTube channel. Um, and I don't just had, yeah, had a good time kind of exploring envelopes and, um, one fun one that, um, uh, that got me back into using the enable, um, uh, modifier, which I haven't done in quite a while is, uh, kind of using, it's kind of using this LFO that, um, is kind of touch activated. So what I mean by that, I'll kind of show you through here. I'm going to add our um, first step, 
um, and I'm going to add enable on this first step. And then our last one, um, I'm going to put that there and I'm going to, yeah, add slopes there. So now I believe, um, yeah, so actually, so you see here, um, and once I press the C key, it goes actually to the enable stage, which I have no voltage here. Um, and this is just going to be a two stage envelope. And it's kind of going to be like a saw wave. <laughs> So, kind of cool. Um, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to move its time range down so it's <laughs> quite a bit faster. But then I can add our um, per stage. Kind of bring down its amplitude a little bit, but yeah, kind of fun um, using this enable bit. So, and I kind of forgot to <laughs> talk about what enable does. When you put that on a stage, it's kind of the reverse of sustain. So. Um, where the uh, start input wants to see a, a held vo voltage, which is kind of sustained voltage um, at at least five volts, um, you know, sustain will keep that voltage until you let go of that key or that voltage drops from the start input. And so this is the opposite. So now it will not progress past enable steps unless the voltage is high. So I'm giving it voltage. and we're getting that envelope. So now I've got this short, just kind of decay envelope for plucky things. And then I've got this kind of inverted envelope. And then I can go back to our ADSR. Oh yeah. Mess with that time range, so like okay, so yeah, kind of some fun ways to show you the different envelopes to that you can you know get. We could kind of keep on going with this. We could add um, you know some interesting delay or sorry, interesting interesting envelopes that might have delay steps in them to where you know, once they're uh, triggered, you might have a period of time before the envelope actually, you know, starts to go through its attack and, you know, sustained decay um, stages. And so we could add, um, yeah, just kind of like a ghost step. <laughs> so where, you know, in instead of our, our first um, voltage being our attack stage, we can make that a decay stage or uh, sorry, delay stage where we'd have the voltage all the way down and we'd just um, give it an amount of time that we want it to, um, for this delay to progress through before it gets to the second stage, which would then be the attack stage to kind of go in into its attack. Um, we could put, you know, extra hold stages because there's um, some... Uh, Sometimes it's nice to after your attack, you kind of have like a, even if you have a sharp attack, have a little hold stage at that high peak of the voltage before it goes into its decay, um, just for kind of extra punch into your envelope. Um, so yeah, you can get into cool things like that. So before I go though, um, I want to first uh, get into um, the external inputs and how we can be augmenting all these stages through their timing or through their voltage through the yeah external sources. So in our um, 223E, we've got pressure output 
and we've got um, it set up for location. So pressure is going to be, you know, the amount of kind of finger pressure I put on a key. And then, um, oh yeah, yeah, the envelope going. And then location is where on these longer keys am I touching? And so the higher up on the key, the more voltage it's going to uh, run into this. So if we go back to our, um, yeah, our first our ADSR, what we could be doing instead of, um, I mean, we still have our time range, but we could kind of give this a, um, like a location-based time uh, time range. So if I put this external uh, stage input in here and I have our stage slider into A, it's gonna read A, which goes to our location input. So theoretically I should have, and actually I'll go, you know, go to the, this is gonna be kind of the 0.2 to three second range. So if I tap at the bottom of the key, it's kind of a, a longer, or sorry, a shorter decay. We can see how quickly that goes through. But if I touch higher up on the key, so I'll use this key. So I, uh, there's our shorter stage. And now I'm going to go highest. So quite a bit longer of a, you know, attack stage. Um, then, you know, what we also could do, we could have a pressure, um, have pressure from our keys um, influence the sustain level. So I can, um, on our second stage, add the external input. And I'm going to then go to B here. And so now we can have our long attack and I'm barely touching that key, but you can see the, um, in the uh, mode section, it's gone yellow. So I'm still sustained there. So if I add, give more finger pressure, kind of have this variable sustain here until I let it go. And then it's going to go through its decay. So. It's kind of cool. So we could like apply this to um, this cool um, function generator that I've got going here, or this envelope. Um, this is our uh, enable envelope. So what we could be doing is um, we could put, let's say let's put location for which is our um a but let's put location for the speed of this thing so we'll add that there and then let's do pressure for um for the amplitude so now <laughs> Let me restart this. So you can see my the pressure of my finger is bringing in the amplitude of this envelope. But then the location of where my finger is at, the higher up it is on this key, you get, you know, kind of a longer time. And it's for going down to the bottom. Get this really cool quick hit thing. So, kind of, I'll show you one more thing that um, I think is pretty fun. Um, we could be bringing other function generators into play here. So, you know, I've had this kind of um, based on, you know, where I'm touching the keys and stuff, where the, or where the sustained voltage is like in this case. Um, but we could have say a looping, uh, 281 channel. I can plug that into C, um, bring that up here. 
so now what we should be getting is after we go through our um, attack stage here, uh, which is going to be location based because that's what we have it um, set to this channel. Then when we get to sustain, as long as I'm holding the note, we're going to get this looping 281. So let's check that out. Kind of cool. Um, if you don't like the the amplitude of this, um, like if it's going kind of too high, we could limit the range of, because um, we have full range on all these sections and what's going into the uh, external inputs. So if we you know, bring it to just plus four and we do this again. You can hear that it, you know, we're not getting the full kind of 10, you know, zero to 10 peak to peak kind of voltages. You're getting that. Still kind of getting that tremolo effect. But we've also upped the voltage, so it's not really going down um, to zero volts. It's, you know, has this kind of sustained bass and then is fluttering um, between that. Oops, I should have done. So I'll bump it up a little bit. Let's just see what that sounds like. Um, so yeah, kind of cool. Um, you know, you could also use, we could use the other function generator, set up another LFO or something similar to that. Um, um, yeah, actually, you know what, let's just try that. Let's take, so instead of that going there, let's have this function generator go there and I'm going to use the same pulse uh, into start. Let's see if this all works. Um, actually, let me... Okay, so we've got... <laughs> So yeah, we can see the other function generator. And actually, I'm going to put this back into full range. So yeah, we're kind of mixing two envelopes together now. So we've got this, you know, this location voltage controlled attack right into this kind of cool like side chain type of uh, feel here. But I can add more finger pressure because that's do that's um, progressing the amplitude on our other kind of sub LFO envelope and location is then speeding things up when I pull it down and then when I let go we got our decay so pretty cool right I don't you know it's envelopes like not the sexiest topic in the world but you know you can do a lot of stuff with them uh, in the MARF so um, yeah, let me know if you, you know, any other cool kind of envelopes that you've done. There's some in the, um, in the Marf manual, there's some pretty cool envelopes where, you know, it might, it uses me both sections to where you're kind of using one as your main envelope and, but you're, 
you might have your decay stage be um, externally uh, change its time through the other uh, function generator going into its you know um, so each time you kind of hit your your envelope your decay time is going to be sequenced with different timings uh, you know you could throw random in there to kind of get different decay times things like that um, so yeah, I don't know. I've been having a lot of fun. Um, go check out the other video I'll put in the link down below um, where I kind of use, in general, those kind of three types of envelopes um, and, you know, over a, another sequence and stuff. It was, yeah, it was a good little jam. So uh, once again, thanks for checking in. Um, you know, feel free to, if you have any kind of questions about what I'm doing here or if you'd like to see me kind of go into the specific topic that I haven't uh, touched base on yet, um, you know, leave it in the comments. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you on the next episode.